Welcome to another great Resonate Sound broadcast. We thank you for resonating with us nationwide on syndication television and worldwide on YouTube, wherever you got us. And hey, special thanks to all you churches out there inside to Resonate Sound with us and in and everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Chris Honaker. Got a question for you. What do you expect? Yeah. A little bit of an off-branded question, wouldn't you say? But seriously, what do you expect? Do you expect good things to happen? Do you expect bad things to happen? Do you expect, you know, to be sick all the time or do you expect to heal? You know, one person once said, hope is 50 50, expectations are 100 100. And a lot of times, the expectation is 2020. Yeah, no pun intended, this is the year. But what do you expect? Do you expect the impossible? Or do you expect the possible? Well, we're gonna answer that question tonight, courtesy of our Associate Pastor Pam Holders, all discussing do you expect the impossible? Let's go resonate, shall we? Well, today the title of my message is, Do You Expect the Impossible? I want you to think about that for just a minute. Do you expect the impossible to happen? And I... Uh, as I was getting this sermon ready, I thought, now, Lord, I, I thought at first it was going to, I thought, I have preached on the impossible before. And I thought, but it didn't take that turn. It went totally different direction, and I'm thankful the Lord knows exactly what he's doing. So if you'll stand one more time, you know, as Pentecost people like to get you up and down. And if you'll stand one more time, we're going to pray in unison together that the Lord just move and anoint. The Spirit of the Lord is very sweet in here this morning. And some of you think, well, there's just not much going on. Well, that's because you're looking to who's not here and why they're not here rather than focusing on God. And if you'll get your mind on Jesus for just a moment and stop and let him permeate your soul and think about the presence that you feel in the building, then you'll get something out of the sermon. But when we come expecting and we're more worried about who's not here and why that one's not here, and we've got some that's sick today, we've got some that's moving, we've got some that's on their vacation, and that's all right. That doesn't have anything to do with those of us that are in here. Okay, so let's just pray and ask the Lord to move. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to preach your word. And I ask, Lord, that you begin to anoint this building from, from top to bottom, that you'll anoint us, the Lord, that we might hear and take from this what you would have us to have. And in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every hindrance, every distraction that the enemy would place upon us. And we command it to be moved and go to the abyss in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we praise you and thank you for what you're going to do through this sermon and through this service. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So do you expect the unexpected, or the <laughs> unexpected, good Lord. Do you expect the impossible? I think I already preached that sermon. <laughs> it is not a matter of what God can do. It is that, he, because that has already been established, nothing is impossible to God. So we should not expect the impossible. We shouldn't look at things as though it's never going to happen when we serve a God that makes things happen. When you touch your hand to a hot pot, you do not expect not to get burned. You expect to get burned. 
When you plant a seed and, and it produces after its kind, you don't expect a watermelon plant to produce an ear of corn unless you're Madison and you plant a flower garden and in the middle of it comes up a corn stalk. I don't know how that happened. But, you know, it doesn't happen that way. What, you, what you're willing, you know, you're expecting what you do. It's like, have y'all ever seen uh, Secondhand Lions? It's an old movie. The guys are buying plant seeds from traveling salesmen, and they went out there and planted a huge garden, and they had at the end of each row what they were expecting, like bok choy and all these different things, and it's just all corn. So you can't expect uh, to plant one thing and get something else. You can't expect to plant one thing in God and receive something else either. You're going to have to be faithful. It, it's, if you will turn with me to Mark 10 and 27... And Jesus, looking unto them, said, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for, for with God all things are possible. I think sometimes we begin to look at our circumstances and we don't realize that He is in control and what is impossible with us is possible with God. Because if you'd have told me I was going to preach and be an associate pastor, I'd have told you that is impossible, but it's not impossible with God. We need to realize the power that is in the name of Jesus and what he can do. Luke 1 and 37 said, for, God, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. So I begin to think of all the times that we doubt and we worry and we wonder why not. And in, instead of just thinking, okay, it shall not be impossible. But we have to stop and think about who is the God of the impossibilities. And we know him. If we have him in our heart and in our lives, we know who he is. But it's us that gets in the way. Are you expecting the impossible? Are you expecting to go to heaven without any, uh, any, any other way than the cross? That's impossible. Because we have to come through Jesus Christ. You can't get to heaven on your good works. You can't get to heaven because you think you're God's favorite. You can't get to heaven because you work every ASU game because that ain't going to get you there. And what you're believing is an impossibility. And we can't believe in those. I thought that was so funny. Okay. Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's the only way we're going to heaven. We have to ask for forgiveness. We have to seek him and ask him to forgive us of our sins and to wash us white as snow and to come and live into our hearts and believe that he is the son of God. We have to confess that we are lost and that we need him. That's the only way you're going to heaven. So if you're expecting to go on your good works or your good looks, it's impossible. But if you believe in Jesus, it's possible. 2 Peter 3 and 9 says that the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. That means he's looking for us to call upon him and ask for repentance. It's not his desire that we spend eternity in hell. It is his desire that you and I seek him out. So that those things come pop, become possible for us. It's when we're not seeking him that we face impossibility. I don't like people to tell me I can't do something. Because I will kill myself trying to do it just to prove them wrong. And I get frustrated if I don't do it exactly as I think it ought to be done. But it doesn't matter what other people think of us. It doesn't matter what they see when they look at us, except that they see Jesus. So you and I have, are full of possibilities in the Lord, as long as we are not expecting the impossible. If you're expecting God's blessings on your life without living in accordance to his word, then you're expecting the impossible. <clears throat> Colossians 3, 1 through 2 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not things on this earth. So what that's saying to you is that if you're planning to serve the Lord, but you are counting on your blessings, but you, you want the blessings, but you're not willing to live by the word of God, don't expect them because that's an impossibility. 
Because those blessings from God come with your servitude to Jesus. They come with your obedience to him. They come with you being willing to sacrifice a Saturday to work at an ASU game. They come with you being willing to say, God comes first. It's when we're not willing to do that, we can't hold on to a promise that's not even going to be ours because we're not willing to hold up our end of the bargain. Ephesians 6 and 8 says we must pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. That means we've got to have our mind on the Lord all the time. Yes, I know sometimes we can't do that. Somebody frustrates us at work or we're busy. But, you know, I have found that even in those situations, I can still feel him here. I can still say, I thank you, Lord, for helping me keep calm and not losing my cool. But the problem is, and you need to understand this today, that if you cannot get to heaven and expect the, or expect the blessings of the Lord to fall upon you when you don't seek him, when you don't pray to him, when you don't read the Bible. When you're not willing to sacrifice and do whatever's required of you to keep your soul in line so that you can walk the road that he set before you. We don't like that because we want to do things our own way. But you're going to find out that it is impossible to serve him and receive his blessings if you're not willing to sacrifice that time and to get in and seek him. If you are expecting our church to grow without becoming an active part of the ministry then you're expecting the impossible because the church cannot grow without you being active in it. As you grow in your spiritual walk, then your ministry and your involvement with the church will want to grow. You won't care that it's just a Saturday at ASU and your feet hurt and you're tired. You won't care that there's a rally on a Friday night when there was a ball game. You're going to be excited to go and do whatever you can for the Lord. But if you're not willing to put forth the effort, don't expect the church to grow. You know, many people would look at us and say, I can't believe they got this far. Well, I can because I serve a God of possibilities. And it is not impossible to fill these pews. But it will be impossible for it to grow if some of you don't realize your potential in the Lord and begin to seek Him and be active and involved within the church. That's how we grow. Sheep beget sheep. Is that not how the saying goes? It takes you sheep to get out and find other sheep. It's your witness that's going to win somebody. And they may not come to our church, but the kingdom's growing because of your witness. But if you're not active, what would you expect it to grow? Ephesians 4 and 16 says this, From whom the whole body fit, fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself. And that like reads Greek when you have to read it. So let me say it to you this way. We're the body of the Lord. And the church is a body. And each of us has an integral part of that body that is required for that body to live. It's no good to have an arm if you don't have the hand to pick up things. It's no good to have, have the legs if you don't have the feet to walk. And each of us make up a different part, a different body part of this church. Some of us are speakers. Some of us are laymen who are workers and sacrificers and prayer warriors. We have to be all of that because it takes all of that fitting us together to make us stronger in the Lord, to make the church function as it should function. It's not a big me and it's not a big I and a little you. What it is is we come together because we love Jesus. And we're willing to sacrifice and do whatever we need to do so that body fits together. Right. It's like having one part in your car break down. Isn't that right, McKenna? And that one part leaves you stranded because they're made to work together to get you on down the road. But when that one part, that tire goes flat, your alternator doesn't work, or, or you need, it needs a good greasing, or it needs antifreeze, or whatever it is, that part is required to make it work. 
That's required of you to make this church work. That's required of you for us to have growth. It's, it's not us working against each other. It's like Brother Christian said, because I was giving him a hard time at the game. It is about being a community working together. Join together. So that even when the enemy comes, there's not an open spot or an open womb that they can just poke at and destroy us. But we're together. I'm lifting you up in prayer. I'll help you take care of that. Do you need assistance? It's like going and, and moving a piano for Sister Reeves because she's a part of the family. And that's what makes our church grow. I was thinking, Lord, now what does that have to do with impossibilities? Well, you're going to find out in a minute. <laughs> the God of the unseen invades the space of your impossibilities and brings about his divine opportunity. I like that. We have impossibilities all the time but through those impossibilities God is able to work his divine opportunity and you and I have to be willing to give him that opportunity we're bad to think oh I can't I can't surrender my life to Jesus because well I can't give up my friends it doesn't matter that they're a bad influence on me or they bring me down I just can't give them up I can't put God first in everything. Come on. I, there's things I like to do. I can't take God with me. <laughs> I can't go out into all the world. I mean, come on. It's just me. I can't do it. But I want to tell you this. If you remember in Luke, and he didn't have that scripture, but there was the rich man who came to Jesus, and he said, I know the word. I've studied. What else can I do? What else can I do? And the Lord told him to sell all his possessions and follow him. And the rich man walked away, sad, because he wasn't willing to do that. What are you unwilling to do? Moses, when he was called, he said, well, I don't know what to say. Or I'm not good with words. And the people just won't believe me. But he led them to the promised land. It is in a situation that seems impossible to us that God breaks in and he presents his divine opportunity. It's when you think you can't do it that God's just waiting for you to call upon him so he can show up and show out. It's just an opportunity. It may be one of the hardest things you've ever gone with, but if you are willing to give it to the Lord, watch what he can do with it. He can make something out of nothing. I thought, Lord, it is because of these impossibilities that we learn about God's heart, his character, and his love. But what about your heart, your character, and your love for God? Are your impossibilities hindering your walk with God? Or what you think is an impossibility, is it hindering what you're able to do for the Lord? We know Moses was, had a stutter and he was afraid to talk, but the Lord gave him Aaron. Is that right? I got that right. Yeah. And then, for a minute, I thought I had it wrong. We know that um, the rich man didn't make it because he wasn't willing to sacrifice everything. But what about you? It's easy to point a finger at Joe over here and Sally over here, but what are you doing? How's your heart for God? How's your expectations of God? Is he... Are you making your impossibilities available to him so that he can move and do things? Most of us don't. Matthew 17 and 20 said, And Jesus said unto him, unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Now, that's two, two or three scriptures I've read already that says nothing shall be impossible. So what's hindering you? What impossibility are you, are you unwilling to give to the Lord? What are you unwilling to sacrifice or to surrender to Him so that He can make it a possibility? We all have big dreams and desires, but we often shoot ourselves in the foot when we think, I just can't do that. That's impossible. It's not going to happen. When all along, we could have been like um, Jessica when, in my 
illustrated sermon the other night where instead of taking those things and holding them in, she was willing to lay them down at the feet of Jesus. If you want your impossibilities to change, if you want your circumstances to change, we need to be willing to give them to the man who makes all things possible. Philippians 4 and 13 says, For I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. That means it doesn't matter what you're going through, that he can give you the strength to make it a possibility. That means he can give you the strength to overcome whatever's in front of you. It's just, are you willing to sacrifice and give it to him? You know, it's not about our ability, but it's about your faith and your hunger and your desire. So where's your desire at? Do you have more of a desire for the earthly things and what you could go do and that's more important than doing anything else? Are you hungry for a better job or for a, a better house and you hunger after those things but you're leaving God out of it? And then we wonder why they seem impossible because we've put God on the back burner and not allowed him to step up and do the possible things he can. I, I was thinking today about all the different things we know in the Bible, and I'm going to read some of them to you. It was impossible to make something out of nothing, but God made something out of nothing when he created the earth. It was impossible for Sarah to have a child if that late in age, but she did. Amen. It was impossible for an animal to talk, but a donkey did speak to Balaam. It was impossible for the Israelites to walk across the river on dry land, but they did. It was, it's impossible that Paul was bitten by a viper and just shook it off and never died, but he did. It was impossible for the young man to fall out of the window and fall to his death and Paul to go down and pray for him and him rise again, but he did. It was impossible for the little woman with the issue of blood to receive her healing through man. But when she sought Jesus, she was healed. I would imagine that some of you in here will have faced impossible things. But if you begin to think about the things that God did and took care of in you, your list could be longer than mine, and I could have named a whole lot more. It would be, it's impossible for Noah to build an ark because it's never rained, but it, he did, and it rained. Yeah. It was impossible for David to beat Goliath, but he did. But none of them did it without God. Right. So no matter what we're going through, no matter how impossible it looks, we serve a God of impossibilities. Are you expecting the impossible to happen? and not expecting the possible to happen through our Lord. Yeah. Ephesians 3 and 20 says this, Not unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask, or think according to the power that worketh in us. And that power is Jesus. Yeah. There is nothing impossible for my God. Absolutely. The only thing that hinders him is our inability to surrender it to him. To fail to ask. But the other thing is, sometimes we, fail, we ask, but we don't have the faith to hold on till we see it happen. And we make it impossible because of our doubt and our worry. But how many more scriptures do you need that say, with God, nothing shall be impossible? Where's your faith? Where's your heart? Where's your desire? Don't walk in the unexpected and believe in the unexpected impossibilities. Don't be there. Believe in God. Believe that all things are possible. That call him on his name. He's right there willing and able to move upon anything you're going through. You don't have to live like you're living in fear that something's never going to happen. You don't have to say, my life's just not ever going to come together. There's no sense in me trying it. You don't have to say, well, I just can't seem to break away from those friends. They've got a hold on me. Break the hold and give it to God. Sometimes the best thing we need is right in front of us, but we're focused in on the wrong things. 
And he can do the impossible things. Amen? Hey, Dad, what up, man? Hey, cold friend. What's happening? Oh, man, no thing, but a barbecue wine. <laughs> hey! Have some sauce in my wig. Thanks for resonating, though. Resonate is bumping every, every Sunday, Wednesday. Hey what, about, hey, what about our whole entire church, you know? All we do is, you know, we praise God, we resonate Jesus. But hey, think about this. It's not just for everybody we meet you. It's for everybody. Come join us. 10 a.m. Come resonate. Let me have to do at 5 o'clock. Wednesday. Chapel Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. A solid foundation in the men's ministries of resonate. Cross the bridge with us, with our women's ministry. All the kids' ministries, yes. All the kids can have fun. So can you. We can't wait to see you try this. 418 County Road 4021. That's right out of Highway 1, the stadium. And uh, guess what? We'll see you there. Hey, and until we see you right here at Resonate, show love and give peace. Resonate Jesus. Jesus. Hey, Pam Hoes, thank you for that one. You know, because that even encouraged me, and um, even, even our guys took some notes on this one. <laughs> and they all popped out. Very, very cool. Especially when you're talking about, you know, impossible. Because you know, God is the God of all possibilities. Let's just go ahead and call that straight up. God is the God of all possibilities. And you know, where, where is your faith? Where's your heart? Where's your desire? Where's your focus? Where's your belief? And when I say belief, I'm not talking religion. I'm not talking tradition. I'm talking belief. What do you believe? Do you believe in the impossible? Or do you believe in the possible? You know, a ministry can't grow. A church can't grow if you're not active. I, and I love that point so much because that kind of tells me that you know, each and every portion of a church or ministry or family, they all have different parts. They all have you know, different things that kind of makes them unique. And what happens when you put all that together collectively? They're a pretty good picture here. And I love I love this quote, and you know, we hope that you took notes on this one, and we hope that you wrote this one down. Your possibilities are possibilities for God to do work. Let me say that one more time. Your impossibilities are possibilities for God to do work. Don't expect the impossible. Expect the possible, because with God, all things are possible. Thank you for watching. God, thank you for letting us resonate your sound. We're right back here next week. Until next week, for our senior lead pastors, Brian and Carmen Adams, for our entire staff and everyone here at Resonate. I'm Chris Honigan. We do indeed say to you, show love, give peace, resonate Jesus. Check us out next Thursday night, 9 p.m. Easter. Good night, Canada, and good night, America.